Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And on today's video, we'll be taking a look at a rather unassuming box full of four addressable RGB fans and a controller which costs less than like £25 here in the United Kingdom. So if you're interested, keep watching. Okay, so this very unassuming, uh, rather OEM looking box was sent to us by one of our members of the Discord community, Ugly Bob. Thank you very much, Ugly Bob. Appreciate it. And he wanted us to check these out and see what we thought of them. Now, these are very similar to some of the fans we've seen previously, uh, but what is slightly unusual about this is it is a four pack and a pretty decent price, around about £25, which we uh, hinted at earlier. So, for £25 to get four fans and an addressable RGB controller is pretty decent value for money, but are they any good? Well, we'll be finding that out in this video. So rated specs, as you can see on the box, are um, yeah, not very easy to come by. So I went to the website and it gives you the full information there. So the fans RPMs, anything between zero and 1200 RPM, and they move around about 38 CFM of air. So yeah, not the highest performing fans, but certainly will get the job done. Now they are connected by a proprietary type six pin connector, which is common to Cool Moon fans as we'll see in a little bit. Certainly, if you want to try and get hold of these in different combinations, they do basically everything from a single fan version up to a whopping 10 fan version. So there is pretty much something to suit most people. If you've got a case similar to the one behind me, the VXR, and you want nine fans, no problem. If you just want one fan, yeah, very simple to do and very cost effective. So anyway, let's take them out of the box and see what we actually get. So I have actually been through these and made sure they all work, all that kind of stuff before we started filming. So we'll quickly go through what we get inside. So first of all, you get a fully functional RF remote control, which is uh, always good to see. Batteries were included in this one, although in certain regions, depending on your postage and kind of legislation, you may not get a battery. So you might need to uh, nip out and get yourself a CR2032 battery to power this thing. Also in the box, four sets of screws, which makes sense because there's four fans in here. You also get the controller. So this is controller. Sadly, it is actually uh, a Molex connector on there. So yeah, not the greatest, but certainly is a workable thing. There is a single connection which goes to the actual hub itself. And the hub is actually pretty decent. It is RGB as well. So the hub itself is RGB. So if you want to make a feature of this in your case, you certainly can do. Also on the back is some 3M tape to uh, stick it to a convenient panel in the back of your system, or you can just tuck it in underneath your drive bays, that kind of thing. There is, like I said, 10 connections on here for fans, and also there's two connections for addressable RGB strips, which uh, you can also get from Cool Moon and various other suppliers, again, on AliExpress. So on one side, you've got fans six to 10. On the other side, you've got fans one to five, and that is pretty much it. There is a blank out of here, which would have been normally for kind of like a pass through to go to a motherboard for RPM and also addressable RGB from the motherboard. Sadly, this particular version is controlled from the control box and the remote control only. So you won't be able to synchronize this with your motherboard. So be it MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte, etc., etc. Sadly, there's no pass through for that. You can though connect up a reset switch to the two pin connector here. So if you don't want to use the included remote control, you can wire it up to a standard reset type switch and you can cycle through the available programs in the RGB menu of which there are literally hundreds. Now I'm not exaggerating. There are so many models and versions of different lighting styles in this. A lot of them are all very similar, but certainly it takes absolutely ages to cycle through them all. So you may uh, want to set up your reset button to prevent you wearing down your batteries in your controller. So that's the controller itself. And next up are the fans. So as you can see, there are four fans included, and these are branded on the back with the Cool Moon logo, as you can see there. No other specs on there, no voltage, etc. They do run on a kind of weird combination of 5 volt and 12 volts. Um, I think that's more to do with the RGB being 5 volt and the fans being 12 volt, but yeah, anyway, it rates them as 5 and 12 volts, which does kind of make sense when you power them up, because there is a slight issue with the fans when we power them up, but we'll show you that a little bit later. But taking a closer look at the fans, as you can see, pretty much the whole thing is a kind of like opaque plastic. So the RGB is going to shine through in pretty much every direction, which is uh, pretty awesome. Also, there are rubber dampeners in all corners, front and back, which is always nice to see. And you've got a blacked out cable, which terminates into a six pin connector, which uh, you can, if you want to, you could pick that apart and connect it up to a regular PWM and also an addressable RGB source. Not for the faint hearted, but certainly can be done if you know which pin is which. The blade design itself uh, isn't really either way. It's not static optimized or kind of airflow optimized. So you've got seven blades on there with a little bit of a scoop there. 
and they do seem to push out a reasonable amount of air. Now on the included fan speeds, it's a little bit difficult to work out what the fan speeds are. I'm pretty much guessing there's five speeds including off. So at the highest rating, I measured 1.4 meters per second of airflow. As we dropped down, went down to about 1.2, then down to one and then down to 0.8. And then the last one was essentially off. So yeah, we'll take a look at that a little bit later, but those are the kind of the amounts of air which will pass through these fans. I have tested them in an open air situation, obviously depending on what case you've got, ventilation, whether you've got mesh or solid front, obviously your mileage will vary. Before we connect them up, the, uh, the measurements of the fans, for those of you that are interested, are 120 by 120 by 25 mil. They do look like they're a little bit wider, but it does seem to be just one of those optical illusions. They are just a standard 25 mil fit. So if you're looking to put these into a regular case or maybe use them in combination with a radiator of some sort, then you shouldn't have any issues there. Now connecting up the whole system is pretty simple. I've got actually a PSU down here, which is connected up. So we've got our Molex connector connected and straight away we can see that the actual control box is illuminated and that means it's working. So pretty much of it, really really straightforward literally just plug in the fans and you're ready to go now you can control all this like i said from the remote control so you've got the off button turns it off on button turns it on usual kind of deal you've got auto which goes through the color cycles and you've got options for brightness which i don't think actually affects no i'll tell you like it does actually affect the control box as well so if you want to adjust the brightness you can do and make it go up and down all that kind of stuff so yeah, pretty straightforward thing to do. Then all you need to do is to put the fans into your PC and then you can connect them up. Now it doesn't seem to matter which one of these headers you actually connect it to. There isn't any kind of RPM readout that comes back to the motherboard. So it doesn't really make a great deal of difference there. So that's one setup. There is some B-roll I've done of this already so you can see what they all look like together. But we'll just connect up a few of them here just so you can uh, see it kind of as I do it. So that is the fans from the uh, the kind of like the front look and if I put these in the other way then you can see what they look like from the rear. For those of you that are interested the cable length on the fans is around about 18 inches so if you want to uh, see if this will work out in your case or not then certainly you can go ahead and measure that. Luckily because of the control box being mounted pretty much anywhere you want to if you put it somewhere around the kind of the rear of the CPU area you should find these fans will stretch pretty much in most directions although obviously probably a good idea to put them in place first and measure it just to make sure. So there we go, there are the fans connected up, all four of them, and I've actually turned the uh, the actual fans themselves off, so we've just got the RGB illumination, which I think looks really good. It's really difficult with my camera to pick up the uh, the kind of the lighting and how it all works, but rest assured from my point of view here, they are very bright and very colorful. The, uh, the saturation on the LEDs is really good. If I turn it down a bit, maybe it'll come through a little bit better on the camera without blasting the lens out. So that is on the... Uh, on the lowest setting lighting wise and as you can see it's still still pretty bright and still quite visible so control wise you can go through the various individual colors so you've got the red green blue various yellows etc so various colors the white is uh, really nice really nice and bright ah, there we go there's the pink sorry i was pressing on the lilac not the pink my mistake put them on auto and it just goes into kind of unicorn puke mode and then goes through the various options available so if we go through Literally, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of variations. Actually, maybe if we go backwards, that might be better to see some of the more uh, kind of flashy ones. So there's various combinations that you can do here. It goes through various lighting cycles, like a kind of, yeah. You get the general idea. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of various different combinations of the lighting with various color outputs. And it's nice to see that they actually do translate onto the controller as well, which are hopefully just about to see there again most people will probably hide that out of the way but it certainly looks pretty good so looking at the fan speeds and this is where it kind of it's a little bit odd so this is on zero so we press it up one and when we do this there is a very unusual kind of noise from the fans almost like a click in so if i get a bit closer hopefully you can pick that up it's uh there's an audible click where it seems like the motor isn't quite getting enough juice And it seems to be on all the fans so that is the first speed i would probably recommend against using that to be completely honest with you second speed the clicking gets a little bit faster and the blades do spin slightly faster but not a great deal the next one is brilliant this is the optimal setting so at this point we're getting about a meter per second of air coming through and they are silent literally silent they are 
Well, I can't even tell they're on. Literally completely silent. I did try with my decibel meter earlier on before I started this video to try and get a reading off of them and I couldn't. They are quieter than the ambient noise in the room. Even with everything switched off, normally you'll find that in most rooms you're looking around about 30 to 35 decibels of ambient noise. Even in a library setting you would struggle to hear these. They are completely silent. They really, really are silent. So let's take them up a level. So you can hear them ramping up now. This is, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that is the top speed. So at top speed, you can certainly hear that they're on. There is a noticeable kind of uh, noise level rise. Again, I find it very difficult to actually isolate this from the rest of the noise in the room. So they're not overly loud, but you can certainly hear air moving through them quite easily, um, which for some people, again, this is on a, a wooden table with a hollow insert, so some of the noise will be coming through there. But I think in a normal PC with the rest of the fans going, your CPU fan, your GPU, well, maybe a GPU fan, power supply fan, all that kind of stuff, they're not going to be any noisier, certainly. If we put them down into the, uh, the kind of second speed down, again, absolutely silent. Fantastic job for Cool Moon. They've done a really good job on optimizing this at this particular level. It's a little bit of a shame that on the lower speeds they're a little bit clicky, but I think, to be honest with you, if you're going to be using these in your PC, you'd be much better off using them in this speed mode and just leaving it as it is. Now, one downside which I did find, which some of you may get annoyed with, is the fact that the actual controller does not remember the fan speed settings. So if we go do a practical test now, and I actually turn this off, so we'll let the power kind of come out of there for a little while, let them go down. And in theory, when you turn your PC back on, it should memorize what setting it was on, fan speed, and obviously RGB as well. So let's try that out. So excellent, it's remembered the RGB settings, but sadly, fan speed is on full blast. So that is a little bit of a negative in my opinion, but again, it's really easy just to uh, knock it down a level, it's nice that it remembers the RGB. For some people, if you go through finding your RGB setting that you really like and then you want to turn on your PC and have that every single time, that is great. The fan speed thing, little bit of a drawback, but again, not the end of the world. And if you're in a system which is relatively noisy or has a little bit of extra noise anyway, I think being on full blast, most people probably won't notice it. I am literally kind of six inches away from the fan, so it's a little bit easier to recognize. If the PC is tucked away in a cubby hole, or maybe a bit further away on a desk, or if you're just one of those gamers that uses headphones all the time, you're never going to notice it. Never in a million years. So with the uh, the lights now, we'll just do a quick test in this lighting setup. Again, it's not the best. We've got some uh, extra light pollution around, but yeah, you get the general idea. So this is on the lowest setting. Next one up. And again... So there's actually quite a good granular control of the lighting. That is, yeah, that's on the brightest now. So they are when they're actually on full brightness, they are particularly bright. And again, because you've got that opaque side frame, it does let a lot more light bleed out than you would normally necessarily see on your system. So yeah, hats off for that. I think that is going to be pretty much it. Okay, so there you go. We've got the studio light back on now. Uh, yeah, you can see it looks a little bit different now. Rest assured, they do look very good in normal use, and hopefully from the B-roll you've seen, you'll see what some of the other shots are like. So let's uh, let's wrap this one up. So pros and cons. So pros, obviously, the fact that you get four fans and a controller for around about £25, I think is awesome. If you divide that down, that's what, £5 a piece for things. So yeah, yeah, £5 a piece. So £5 each for a fan, £5 for a controller. That is particularly good value for money, in my opinion. It would have been nice to have seen a little bit of extra control, but certainly for £5 a fan, you could kit out an entire system with 10 fans in there, and it isn't going to cost you more than maybe a couple of Corsair fans, so you definitely have that to uh, take into consideration. The lighting options, again, there's tons of them, so no complaints there. The wiring and everything is very simple, very straightforward. I think even a complete novice with RGB could get these, put them into the system, and there's basically no confusion, literally. Pick up the controller, press what you want to do, and that's it, job done. The fact that the system is so cheap is going to be, I think, the defining factor for these. Again, if you want to get a different set with maybe six fans or three fans or whatever, then obviously you can look into that as well to either save or invest 
in the actual setup. Would have been nice to have seen them using standard RPM connectors and also standard RGB connectors, but again, for this kind of price point, I think we can pretty much easily excuse that. So negative wise, I think that is pretty much it. The fact that there isn't that kind of granular control of the RGB through the motherboard, the pass-through would have been excellent. And I suppose if anything to be extremely picky is the fact that the RPM does go to full blast when you turn them on and they don't remember the setting. That is a slight drawback, but certainly not a deal breaker, at least not for 25 pounds in my opinion. So anyway, let me know what you think about these in the comments section below. Thanks very much again to Ugly Bob for sending us these to review. I uh, really do appreciate it. And yeah, please do let us know in the comment section what you think of them. Would you put them in your system for a budget build? Do you think this would add that little bit of extra bling which would help you sell that system? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested to know. So anyway, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.